We are here on the Sweat Ranch on Ashland National Forest. It's uh, listed on the National Register of Historic Places and is a great place for people to come and have an opportunity to see how homesteading was in the early 1900s. Sweat Ranch is named for Oscar Sweat. Oscar Sweat was a local individual who lived in the area, ran cattle up here with his father and brother. When he was running cattle up here, this area was actually part of the Uinta Forest Reserve, which was created in 1897. And then in 1906, Congress passed the Forest Homestead Act, which allowed these areas to be opened up for homesteading to become private lands. Oscar was very interested in doing that, but he was only 16 years old and couldn't file for open homestead claims, so he had his mother, Elizabeth Sweat, come up here and file for him. Two years later, he filed additional lands, and they both basically ranched the area together. Oscar and his mother filed a claim in 1909, and then soon thereafter, Oscar married his wife, Emma, and they moved up here and lived year-round. The, the small cabin was built in 1912, and it was actually a cabin located over McKee Draw that was disassembled and hauled over here by Oscar and then built. And he and his wife lived in it for the first about five years of their marriage and had two children that lived in this little one-room cabin. Then in 1919, Oscar built a larger cabin, two room cabin, and had a, an additional three children while he lived there. Um, by 1929, his wife and his daughters were requesting to have a more modern house and a larger house. They lived down, in, they'd been down in Vernal and then also in Manila, and realized that people had indoor plumbing and they had electricity and different things like that. So um, Oscar in 1929 built this large house. For most of the time that Oscar and his family lived up here in the cabins, they had a small privy that they would have to go to an outhouse for the um, bathroom. And then when he built his large house, he didn't build a bathroom onto it. And his daughters were continuing asking him for indoor plumbing. So he finally conceded and built a bathroom onto the house, but he refused to have it inside the house because he didn't think that was clean so that the bathroom is actually on the outside of the house. You have to go outside the house, walk down the porch, and then enter the bathroom from the outside. Oscar Sweat on his ranch used horses and cattle and traditional farming techniques even up into the 1940s and 1950s. He sold the ranch in 1969. He used horses and wagons and plows to ranch and to farm. Ashland National Forest gained the ranch in 1970 and restored much of the interior furnishings to what they would have been when the Sweat family lived here. So if you come and visit the ranch, you'll be able to visit inside the buildings, see furniture from that time period, see how people would have lived on a homestead in the early 1900s. This is a cream separator from Sweat Ranch. They would have used the funnel up here to basically get all the big chunks of like hay and manure out of the milk before they put it in. They'd pour it in this log, large container and then one of the children would take, um, they'd spin this wheel and through centrifugal force you would have milk come out one side and cream come out the other. In the 1930s, um, phone system was brought up to the Greendale area and the sweats were the first phone in the area and for a while were the only phone in the area. So people would come here and use this phone to be able to call different people. And it was a single line wire that would send a signal, almost like a Morse code, to say this is who this is for, go to a connector, and then you can connect on to any, anyone you need to talk to. One of the interesting buildings you can see when you come here is the spring house. So the, the way a spring house functioned is that there's creek outside was diverted through pipe into this concrete basin. As the water would bubble up through this pipe, come out and then feed through. As the water went through, it continually co cool off the trough and then the floor is also concrete and you keep the floor um, cool. The walls were double insulated on the bottom, on the sides and on the top. So he would keep his butter here, he'd hang his meat up over on these hooks. So anything that needed to be refrigerated, the spring house was used as a big walk-in refrigerator. One of the interesting things about Sweat Ranch is all of the different buildings that he used, whether it's the milking barn or the, the pig barn, the, the ch chicken coops, the storage sheds that they had are all the original buildings with original structural materials. So you can come and see the, the type of environment people lived in the early 1900s. 